been asked a lot of questions about the difference between professional tables and the tables that you play on in the clubs. You know, they, they imply that the pockets on the professional tables are larger simply because it's an entertainment sport and they want to make the professionals look good. Let me assure you, they are smaller. They're not larger, they are smaller. And the game is more difficult on a professional table than it ever will be on a club table. Right. So let's just take a look at the size of the pocket for a start. Well, I've measured these pockets over here and on the club, on the professional table, this is uh, 78 millimetres wide at its narrowest point. I've also done the same on one of the club tables out there and it is 82 millimetres wide at its narrowest point. Uh, that's only four millimetres, but I can assure you that four millimetres is quite significant. Having said that, it's not as significant as the cut of the pocket. Let me explain. The first thing is if I take this slate and cut it further into the table without altering the, the pocket size at all, I have made that into a large pocket. So this slate on a professional table is further into the pocket, generally speaking. Then we come to the cut of the cushion here. Right? These, this shape here tends to encourage the pocket, the, the ball rather, to keep out of the pocket rather than go in. On the club table, it's encouraged to go in to the pocket. Added to that, when we talk about the rubber, it is cut square. It's vertical in that point there. When you look at the club table, it's not all club tables, I admit that, but generally they are given some degree of undercut, encouraging the ball to go into the pocket again. I talked about the fall of the slate. What I didn't mention is a radius on that slate. So if I get a ball and we've got the radius on the slate, as it approaches the pocket, it hits the radius and it has a tendency to want to fall in. That's not the case with a professional table. They cut square. That is sort of a sharp right angle on the, on the cut of the slate. Now this only applies to the star table at this moment in time. If we were using, say, Riley tables, the cut might be slightly different. They'd still be tighter, but I, as far as I know, they might be slightly different. Now, I tried to get hold of some of the templates used on these tables, and as far as I'm aware, I was told that the star company old sets of these and they don't allow anybody to have them other than their star workers. The Will Snooker have copies of these templates. And if you want to get the, your cut of your table exact to how they play on the television, then you are going to have to use the Will Snooker fitters to, uh, to install your table. Because Star and Will Snooker are the only ones that hold the official templates, and they certainly wouldn't let me have them. When we come to the center pocket, right, the size of the opening, I'm not going to say that it's not significant, of course it is, but it's less, less important than the cut of it. Now, if we are approaching a pocket full in the face like this, the size of the opening no real problem, right? But when you come to attack the pocket from a, a more oblique angle, then this area here, this, this knuckle here of the centre pocket, you know, it sticks out more on a professional table and it makes that pocket awfully narrow. Just a final couple of points. The rubbers on the professional table yeah, are 
brand new, shall we say. They're very lively. And if you hit the ball at pace and you catch the rubber, it tends to rebound a lot and stay out. If you play at the right pace, in other words, gently, then invariably there's a sheen on the cloth because it's new, and it will encourage the ball to slide in. As that sheen wears off, then the table, when you approach the, the pockets at an angle like this, it becomes tighter, all right? And because of the sheen is not there, because the sheen is not there, it tends not to want to slide in. So we could argue that the sheen makes the game easier. And that up to a point that is true, but if you play with unintentional side on the cue ball, which a lot of amateurs do, let's be, let's be good about this, a lot of amateurs put in unintentional side on, that cue ball, because of the sheen, deviates more offline than it would on a club table. So the direction in which you want the ball to go gets a little trickier. I hope that clears that up for you, all right, about the difference between club tables and professional tables and the relevance of the pockets. Now, I don't want to imply that all club tables are too generous. Of course they're not. I can envisage a lot of comments coming in about, you know, old billiard tables that, where the centre pocket is so tight you could hardly pot a ball. Well, I've played on those tables. Yeah, and some of them are indeed very, very tight. I've also played on club tables where the pockets are very generous. Uh, I know of one club owner who said to the table fitter, open the pockets up. I want my punters, my players to have fun. They're amateurs, some are beginners. I want them to be able to pop balls. That is where they get their satisfaction. And the fitters turned round to him and said, look, I'm doing it to my templates. And he said, no, I don't want your templates. Open the pockets up so that my punters can have fun. So, you know, it does show that club tables do vary. On a final point, it doesn't matter what table you play on. If your cue action is spot on, you know, if you can deliver that cue where you're aiming, you will pop balls. So work on that cue action and good luck with that practice.